Hello and welcome back to Building on a Budget Models. I'm Thomas and this is the first part of the Fujimi Garage and Tools Kit in 124th scale. Now I'm going to be building this in no particular order because it comes with an awful lot of things. Firstly though, this is the large tool chest. This kit is the same age as me, first tooled in 1987, so there's a little bit of flash in places, but since these shapes are all pretty regular, a little bit of cleaning up with sanding stick and some extra thin uh, Tamiya cement meant that it went together really nicely. Now basically this tool chest works like a box, but it's also got two sections in the front where you can put removable drawers. Now that means that the sides need to be in the correct position for the drawer runners. Also, the underside has holes in it for you to put some little wheels, so make sure you get that the right way up as well. Once I'd glued all of these sections together, I then primed it and painted it in some red enamel gloss. I also did that for the drawers, and I used a little bit of silver acrylic along the edge of the drawers. Good to use something like Revell here because that scratches off really easily with a toothpick. They're a bit fiddly but these do go in quite nicely. You can also use the uh, pointed end of a blade to uh, remove the drawers. Now then you've got the casters that go at the bottom. I painted these just in matte black. Now you've then got this um, shelving unit. I think I've got a very similar one to this in my shed. This has got lots of little sort of slots on the uh, legs, which means that you can choose which height the five shelves go. Using the flat of the uh, table here was really useful because it meant that I was able to position all the pieces accurately and carefully. Now, as this is for Jamie, it recommends Mr. Hobby colours. However, I don't have any. Fortunately, Kent Models, where I ordered this from, gave me this uh, sheet which shows all of the different colours. It recommended this to be a kind of light grey, but I chose to do it in silver instead. There were also slots down the side, as you would imagine in a real one, and a little bit of black panel line accent really kind of uh, picked those out. Next, these oil canisters uh, sandwiched together very simply. I actually considered leaving these in the uh, base plastic grey because they are actually made out of plastic or perhaps metal in real life. Some pretty large seams on these which you can remove with a sanding stick or a craft knife. I chose to prime them and painted them in white later on. There's also a fire extinguisher here which is really nicely moulded. I left this on the sprue so that I could hold onto it with a clip when I painted that in gloss red. And then you've got two of these wooden boxes. Now these crates uh, have got a very nice wooden texture on. They've got some BBS uh, decals to go on the outside and uh, on the box they are shown with some rims on the inside. However, they are tiny. I don't know what rims would go on the inside of these, maybe scooter ones. You're certainly not going to get any 124 scale wheels inside these boxes. Here are the oil canisters after they were primed, and then I just used a little bit of white. Maybe should have sprayed on the white, but never mind. Now this is Revell Semi-Gloss Brown. And then after that, I dry brushed on some matte brown from uh, Humbrol. I'd used some rubber black for the uh, hose here, and then there's a nice little decal to go on the outside of the fire extinguisher. BBS decals here um, with the UMP decal solution I used kind of settled onto the wood grain really nicely. And this snap-on decal here doesn't fit on the top where it needs to, so I put it on one of the lower drawers instead. 
and you can see how nicely they fit together. And next you've got this desk drawer here. Now there's two drawers in this which can be removed. Legs come on a separate sprue here. And I found that the thin cement wasn't quite strong enough to fit these into place, so I used some regular Tamiya cement instead. Also, I decided to keep this in the base primer as I thought a matte grey is actually quite a good colour for a desk. This cross piece here fits really, really nicely. I'm very impressed with uh, how this goes together. Now then there is a desk chair. It suggests doing it all in black, but I thought that boring. I recommend putting the chair together with super glue as I'm doing here, because if you plan to put a figure on it, as I do, you want it to be as strong as possible. Now, there should be four wheels to go on the bottom of this. However, I could only find two, so I may not have been looking hard enough, um, but uh, for now, it just rests flat on the floor. That's the desk and the chair. Now then there's a phone and I decided to use my sort of trick to make curled wire to make a cable for it. So this is to me a cable which I've then wound around a needle which gives you that kind of uh, curved wire that you see on telephones. Then drill some very small holes in the bottom of the phone and use a little bit of super glue to fit it into place. Once I was happy with the wire, a little bit of grey on the end of a cocktail stick, picked out the phone buttons, and there we are. Now, I had some spares in this Rally Mechanics set, including a laptop. I sprayed it in silver and then clipped it together using a little bit of thin cement. And then, rather than using the decal that came with it, I took a screen grab of my own YouTube channel sized it down to about two centimeters wide and then printed that off as a decal and there we are they're watching my channel that should help with the watch hours now for the base here the instructions also show you how you can put two of them together to make a larger garage so i ordered one this is just the garage without the tools now for the door and the window here you can see that they're molded in so I used my Dremel initially with one of the cutting saws, also important to wear eye protection, and had a go at sawing it out. Need to do this on quite a high speed and to be very careful so as to not damage anything. It's not very accurate though, so I had to sand this up with some 120 grit sandpaper afterwards to make it as smooth as possible. Now, to clip them together, there are these kind of joints here which need to be removed. Again, sand these down, and then there are these uh, kind of wedge parts that join the base up to the uh, adjacent one. Good idea to do this flat on the table so you can sort of give it a bit of firm pressure, and then use some super glue to uh, really make sure that they're secure. Now the floors are these really nice embossed tiles which have got a slight sort of sheen to them. However, they're too big and they don't meet up at the sides. So I tried to kind of find where the tiles kind of, kind of overlap and then used a ruler. This is Tutankhamun. Write in the comments if you get that joke. And then I used a new craft knife blade to cut down the edge. There's also some spaces in the corners which need to be trimmed in order to let the supports go into those positions. Super glue is really useful here. Again, these kind of wallpaper pieces, as the instructions call them, are too big. So I used a craft knife to cut them into place and then this door I did in satin white. Then used some PVA glue to fit these into place. These are just cardboard so PVA is the best kind of choice. It's also a good idea to put down a heavy book 
on these to make sure that they don't move around while drying. Now then, when you're happy with them, using a little bit of super glue is a really good idea so that they can fit into place. You may need to make the wallpapers a little bit larger to overlap with the next door one. I used a old craft knife blade to cut this one out instead as I was a little bit worried about taking a um, Dremel to the middle of it. And then you've got a window piece that goes in the middle. Annoyingly, the uh, PVA made the wallpaper warp a little bit here. I also bought some Doll's House wallpaper here, this kind of red brick one and I decided to cover the exterior as well so that the diorama kind of can be viewed from the inside or the out. Applied this in much the same way and used a craft knife to trim it. There's an old book. I've also made some custom decals to decorate the walls. I've also included the 3D printed car lift, which Rory made for me. Let me know what you think so far, and I'm looking forward to doing part two, where I will add some more of the pieces. Thanks a lot for watching. Please do comment, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.